Yeah, so now move to the mixture strategy. So as I said, in some of the cases, if you're looking at the pure strategy, you probably don't really have a um, you know, solution. You probably don't really have, a, a, when I say solution, the Lush equilibrium, right? So the Lush equilibrium not always exists. Let's just look at this example. This match penny, the famous match penny sort of a game. Um, this is also zero sum game, by the way. It's because if you're looking at the reward, these player one play to the adding together, it's always zero. So it's um, it's a case that when you win, the other one gonna lose. And uh, so in this case, this is this match panic. We, we were looking at whether there's a Nash equilibrium. We can do this to the case. Let's say head head. So suppose player two, let's say player two sort of uh, stick to heads and we'll see what happens for player one. So player one obviously gonna choose the tails because of that, okay? Because of this have a higher payoff. Let's look at the tail heads. If the tail heads, let's say player one stick to this, whether, you know, player two gonna deviate from it. But if you're looking at the red ones, this is a payoff for player two. You are indeed gonna deviate from it, right? So the move from here. So from here, this is, a, you know, player two gonna stick to here, but looking at what happens for player one. So if player one, this is minor one, this is plus. So they're gonna deviate from it. So create some kind of, a, you know, circling around. That means that there's no, there's no equilibrium in the pure strategy space. So how would you play this game then, right? How would you play this game then? What would be your prediction about of the outcomes? You, what you can do though is you can renderize your strategy. In other words, that you're not gonna choosing the H and T, right? One of these action, head or tail. If you're talking about this uh, a penny a match penny case, but that you, whether you're choosing a probability, you're gonna choosing head or tail, right? So player one gonna say, I wanna choosing H with certain probability. The player Two equally going to say, I'm going to choose in probability of Q or play H as well. Then this is called a mixed strategy, right? And you could say a mixed strategy would always include a pure strategy because you can set up one of these, you know, um, probability as zero, then you basically choose one of the, uh, these actions deterministic, deterministic. So what a payoff then? In this case, a payoff would be the expected value, right? So it's going to be expected value. How can we? Um, see that. So suppose that a player one um, um, think about the pure strategy, that, but player two choosing a, a choosing sort of a mixed strategy Q. If player one choosing edge, he will get a payoff of minus one with probability Q, right? So let's see whether that's the case. So let's say player two gonna uh, choosing Q, right? And then Player one choosing, oh sorry, I think this is sort of a, this is gonna be player one. Uh, sorry, this is gonna play a loop. Huh? Uh, get confused. Sorry, yeah, this is gonna play one. This um, column player gonna be player one. I think that's correct, okay. Yeah, so player one choosing edge, um, hats, and he get a pair of, of oh sorry, um, bit confused. Um, player one choosing hat. Um, he will get a payoff. Yes, I think he, uh, player one he might, uh, choose. Mm. Suppose player one invalid the pure strategy. And uh, if player one choosing H, he would get a payoff. Uh, okay, I think, uh, yeah, so I think this is player one. This is player two. Okay. So player one choosing H uh, had he will get p of minus one, right? With probability q, is because of the uh, player two has the um, you know a probability of q of of, of choosing um, you know heads, right? And uh, with um, you know another probability of choosing uh, another solution. So you can 
also think about the player one gonna choose in T, right? And he will get minus one uh, with probability one point Q and uh, plus one with probability Q. So the question here is that, is H or T more appealing to player one? So you could actually write it down this as sort of an expected value for, um, for player one. Right? So player one, then in Q probability, they're going to have minus one. And the one minus Q probability is going to be a sort of a, you can look at this, minus plus one. Right? So instead of, instead of this player one, instead of getting the deterministic sort of a reward, they will get expected reward, which is and also depend on the choice of you know, player, player two. So equally, it really depends on their choice, whether it's a hat or a T. If it's a T, then obviously you need to um, mix up these two. So basically get that. So interesting things is that um, the player two can choosing the Q in such a way that player one gonna make no difference between H and T. Then in that case, the player one would be able to choosing you know, uh, mixed strategy as well. Because otherwise, you're always choosing one of the pure strategy because either, you know, this expected value are larger than this or the other way around, right? So you, you, you want these two to be equal so that player one would make no difference between H and T, therefore they can actually choose a mixed strategy. So uh, this is sort of the uh, important concept. We'll, we'll see um, how can we make use of that. So, um, the Nash equilibrium uh, for the mixed strategy is that I have a pair of the strategy, in this case with a probability, right? one of them with P and one of them with Q, such that each is a best response to each other. So the definition is the same, but the strategy space is different. So that's why the strategy now is different with the action. Previously, we're talking about, I have no uh, distinction between action and strategy is because the strategy is action, is a pure strategy, right? But here is a mixed strategy. There is a mixed strategy is not the, t the, the pure action you're taking, but rather mix those actions. So now this strategy space is really, you know, uh, is a simplex of the, you know, of, of probability. Um, so the Nash in his, you know, 50s paper, and that uh, give him this Nobel Prize, is basically he proved that this always exists, right? If there's a no existence of Nash, whether we you still have a question about whether it exists or not, then really the Nash equilibrium is meaningless. But then here basically says they always has the, you know, Nash equilibrium in some of the cases, right? Then it's make this Nash equilibrium meaningful. So as we examine that no Nash equilibrium can use a pure strategy, right? We can examine. Um, and so suppose that the player two want to have a unique best response, which is a pure strategy, but not necessarily the best response for player one. So what is player one's best response to strategy Q? So as we said, right, as we looking at this, um, the Q, suppose the case, as we calculated previously, okay, suppose in this case, remember that we have this uh, calculation about the Q, okay. Suppose um, these two are not equal. That meaning that, okay, the expected value for H or T for player one, this pick up H or pick up T um, may be higher than the other, right? If that's the case, then the player one, there's no way the player one gonna choose a mixed strategy because for them, either H is the best, is a better off, or T is better off. Then there's no point for them to mix. If the mix, the, 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 um, the, the uh, expected pair of gonna be smaller than any of the pure strategy. So that's what this means here, okay? So, so that can be part of Nash equilibrium by this above. Therefore, 
if okay if the strategy okay if the strategy uh, the sorry if the Nash equilibrium if there's a glass equilibrium in the mixed form right in the mixed form then we have to make sure that uh, this one minus two q is equal to two q minus one it's be precisely because of with this mixture q then this player two would make no difference for player one choosing h and t and therefore allow this uh, player one to choosing mixed strategy and therefore only in that situation you will have a best response to each other therefore you have a nice equilibrium so so that's basically say if you have I have a condition that is a mixed strategy uh, of both of them. But of course, then in, in the period, uh, when we examine that uh, in the table, it shows that there's no large equilibrium in the pure strategy. Therefore, we get rid of the the fact that um, there's no Nash, uh, uh, get rid of the fact um, that uh, we, we're looking for the large equilibrium in the pure strategy case, but only looking at a large equilibrium in the mixed strategy sense. Right, so that's rash, rash, uh, re reasoning behind it. So look, 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 if you're looking at this mixed strategy case for natural equilibrium, then this must be equal. It's simply because of that um, uh, a condition that uh, the best response, right? If it's not equal, then the mixed strategy will never be the uh, best response for player one. And therefore, uh, we don't have a natural equilibrium. So you could do the same trick for the other one, right? Uh, then therefore you can actually choose in this um, what kind of mixture the H, or sorry, the player one would have in order to make player two make no difference between these two, right? Otherwise they can't choose in the two, Q uh, mixture, uh, right? So you basically say, you know, basing these two formulas, two uh, variables, you can basically solve this by figure out the Q and the P. In this particular game, so so that's the way. That's one of the simplest way to calculate the large equilibrium in the two uh, player, two action option uh, normal form game. Okay, so so you can see that when you make a QP, QP uh, they will make no difference between playing Q and T uh, sort of a. Uh, in, in the internal pure strategy, but how can we actually interpret mixed mixed equilibria, right? The mixed strategy in equilibrium. In fact, it can be in practice happened quite a lot in sports, right? We always randomize our choice. When we randomize our choice, then these others would have no difference between the action they're making. Therefore, you don't really know, always. So, if you okay, if it and that it, 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 therefore they would confuse themselves to choosing one of the action, right? So obviously this is better for you. Otherwise, they will have a pure strategy, right? Um, so and also in species, in species, and you can think about this that individually they might take in one pure uh, pure strategy or certain you know deterministic action, but for the population itself, maybe some of these, um, you know, individuals they play action A. Some of the individuals they play action B. Proportionally, right? In the population, they play the mixed strategy. So population as a whole might have equilibrium. So when we later when we're talking about this sort of a uh, um, evolution, evolutionary algorithms and evolutionary game theory, we're actually going to talk about this. So. The large, and you can also think about large equilibrium. It's equilibrium in beliefs. If you were believe the probability that gonna play by others, they also also have a belief of probability to play by you. Then it's sort of self-reinforcing equilibrium in a probability sense, right? So later when we're talking about Bayesian game theory, we're talking about uncertainty. If you don't really know, you sort of. Uh, you know, uh, deterministic action from others, then you will be able to make use of beliefs to really construct the game. So let's look at uh, some of these uh, examples. So the Amer American football. Um, so 
in this case, it's a, obviously it's a simplified version of that. That say the offense have two actions, either pass or run, and defense also have actions: defense of defense the pass or defense the run. Okay, so uh, I will answer the question then when we finish up this example. So then you have this uh, sort of. Uh, uh, payoff is that if you pass and defense pass, obviously defense thinks that the uh, defense pass and offense do the pass, nothing happens, so nobody move. It's therefore the payoff is zero zero. Equally, if you defense and run and actually the offense is running, then it's also nobody gonna move. Therefore, uh, nobody gonna get a benefit benefit of that. Therefore, it's zero zero. But if you Offense wrong, but the defense actually think they are pass. The obviously offense gonna have five uh, rewards, and this um, defense would pass. So equally, if you offense wrong, uh, sorry, offense pass, but the defense wrong, obviously this is worst case for defense. Um, then they will get a minus ten. So based on this, you can actually calculate um, randomize it, randomize their policies. You can look at whether there's a pure strategy in the equilibrium, and then you can find that it probably they're not. But you're looking at this P and Q sort of mixed strategy, you calculate that probability of you know pass and run um, using the trick that we do. do. So in other words, you're choosing Q in such a way that you would make the offense no different between pass and run, and you also for offense choosing P, choosing P, and they will also make no difference in terms of that. Um, you can actually calculate that. So by looking at Q for no difference between offense, internal pass and run, then you can get this um, Q. Equally, you can calculate the P as well, the probability for offense. Then this uh, P and Q construct this sort of a mixed strategy that's in Nash equilibrium. And you can actually calculate payoff to the of um, to the offense, which is a sort of a expected value. That's it. I'll, I'll leave you to work this out.